Hey there, how's it going? This is Navajo Rocks. Incredible. So, today is the second day that I tried to go into Arches and it was full because they stopped allowing any more vehicles into the park. I managed to get into Arches the first day that I arrived. I spent the afternoon there, however, pardon my uh, gasping for breath, it is high elevation here. And so I had an amazing afternoon in the park there, but I saved uh, visiting many of the main sites because I plan to go back again and record a uh, full day tour of the park. Now, apparently the uh, park might be opening up again in a few hours, and so I'm going to explore around some other areas and then give it a shot once again. There is so much to see in this whole area beyond arches. I went to Canyonlands yesterday, which is absolutely phenomenal. And so uh, I was just driving out the road towards Dead Horse. I talked to a park ranger who recommended Dead Horse as another place to visit. And I just saw these rocks and was like, man, it would be great to get, you know, up close to them. And then saw that there was a trailhead, but the trailhead is for mountain bikers. There was a alternate trail uh, entry point for pedestrians. It like said no mountain bikes, just pedestrians. And so I walked in there and the trail kind of disappeared. And so here I am just uh, getting up and getting a nice uh, view of these rocks. So we'll see what happens later in the afternoon. If I can't get back into arches, then we'll see something else. Look at these indentations, like massive natural caves. And so found the trail again. Such a trip how natural forces over eons of time created this series of caves carved into this cliff. What exactly? would have caused that. I mean, one cave would be one thing, but a whole series, one, two, three, four, I think a fifth, all in a row like that. And look at this one, it is just massive. And look at that cliff face. I haven't heard about rock climbing yet in the area. I would assume it must be popular here, but uh, haven't seen any so far. That seems like a uh, rock climber's heaven or hell, hard to say. It would definitely be a tough one. How's it going, man? Howdy, man, going great. Thanks. There's, uh, I think there's five behind me. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. Howdy, yep. Howdy. Hi, how are you? Hello. Good morning, Hello. doing great. Excuse us. No problem. Thank you. Good morning. Howdy. Hey there.
So there's a road right there. This is a campground and a parking area for a trailhead heading towards this. Look at that. So this is Castle Valley. And the way that I found out about this is that I decided to leave the Navajo rocks where I was hiking. And rather than drive out to Dead Horse and explore around there, I decided to head back to Arches and see if it might be opening up or some indication of when it might open up in the next like hour or whatever. And so I got back there about a uh, 15 minute drive from Navajo rocks back towards Moab. The uh, sign still said park full, no indication when it was maybe going to open back up today. And so I decided to uh, drive into Moab and maybe find some uh, food and do a little shopping or whatever and kill some time. And on the way back, then I saw a turnoff that uh, I'd seen a couple times before. I had no idea what it went to, but it was going up that uh, river canyon that I showed. And so I turned off it and right away there was a sign that said, Castle Valley, 17 miles. Castle Valley. That just sounded like it had to be cool. I'd never heard of it. So I drove out here, as you saw, absolutely incredible drive. And then saw that massive spire thing just boom out of the blue and then saw this uh area where there were cars parked there wasn't even a sign that said castle valley on the uh, road there but it was clear that this was the uh main access point to get in there and then i asked some people in the parking lot and they said yes this goes up to those rocks there i guess the one on the left is called the priest and the campground there indicated it was a climber's campground, like mostly climbers, rock climbers. And so I mentioned earlier, what about rock climbing? It seems like such an ideal area for it. And so, yes, they are definitely around. Man, oh man, this is already getting really cool. And oh man, this is a intense uphill climb, but I'm a lot closer to the spire. You can see it just sticking up up there. And then look at that view. I came from right over that thing. And there's the trail. Heading up to the left, and then it'll wrap around up there, I'm sure. Maybe even get uh, like right to the base of that uh, spire up there.
taking a break, drinking some orange juice. Look at that view. So I'm just about done between the elevation and uh, the steep uphill, then I'm just kind of pretty wiped out. But I really want to get a good uh, view of that, whatever you call that, I guess maybe that's the castle and the priest right around this corner. And I'm not sure what you call that. But I saw a rock climber on the uh, right-hand side. They're out of view now, but uh, had some ropes. Oh man. And I've seen like, including the rock climber, five people in total hiking up here. There's the parking lot down there. Moab is basically just over that plateau, and then Arches is out there, and where it was at the uh, Navajo Rocks is further that way. I guess that is the priest, a little bit separated there, with some kind of a headdress or something. The Double Arch Trail, this short easy stroll through some loose sand, leads to the awe-inspiring Twin Arches. The larger opening has a span of 144 feet, the third longest in the park, and a height of 112 feet, the highest in the park. You are here, so I went to the uh, windows, which are other side of this hill, over there. North window, south window. The last time that I was in the uh, park two days ago. But didn't make it out to this uh, arch here, you can see it there. Massive. And so the basic concept as far as how all of this was created is that basically when the uh, land was, you know, first made millions of years ago, then it was different hardness of rock. And so over the eons of time, then the softer rock dissipated, eroded, and the harder rock remained. That's how it happened.